This was not how I wanted it to go. What was supposed to be a fun story based around visiting the markets of Da Nang, exploring and eating some great food, became something completely unintended, but impossible to ignore. I'm John Sabot, and these are my Far East travels. It's a couple of weeks before the start of the extended Reunification Day long weekend in Vietnam, and I was in the process of compiling a video about visiting the local markets of the city. When I started on this video, I asked myself, why do I love visiting these markets so much, to the point sometimes of obsessiveness? I'll even walk out of these places without buying a thing, but completely satisfied with the time I've spent exploring them. I've been like this for as long as I can remember visiting busy Asian markets in my hometown, fascinated by the bottles filled with exotic sauces and the atmosphere, the shouting out of what's for sale in the fruit and produce sections, the wet markets, an environment that is non-existent in Western grocery stores that are albeit clean but sterile feeling, organized but boring, with almost no interaction with anyone. In places like Da Nang's giant con wholesale market, you can find almost anything for sale here. Loads of fresh tropical fruit and vegetables, amazing condiments, dried foods, almost anything you need for the house, and these aisles filled with some of the best street food of central Vietnam. It feels like a food temple of greatness, a place that elicits reverence, in my humble opinion. You'll find ladies like my friend here usually mixing up a single dish, in this case, a bowl of spicy turmeric noodles, a specialty of the region, and no better place to try them. This version features the famous yellow turmeric noodles, including some peanuts, fish sauce, garlic, shallots, fresh herbs, and a dose of very hot chilies. It's a snack and possibly the best tasting thing in the market. This dish costs 20,000 dong or 87 cents. This is absolutely delicious, like the perfect snack. Many of the dishes available here are approximately the same price, and they are all of excellent quality. Like me, you might feel a little self-conscious sitting here with curious locals checking out to see what you're eating and your reaction to their exotic dishes. Thankfully for me, it's a break from the height comments, as long as I'm crouched on my little plastic stool here. Con Market was established in the 1940s and became a place where farmers and fishermen from around central Vietnam could sell their products. There are over 2,000 stalls here. The other floors in the market cater to people looking for clothing and household items. But personally, I'm mostly interested in the fresh food and getting a glimpse and taste of the local dishes. Plus, there's always more chance for engagement in this, the busiest part of the market. And they do sell bargain clothing, as you'll see by these shopping frenzies here. It's like a page out of Black Friday, except it happens every day. <laughs> There's always something to see at Khan's wet market, and the streets and alleys around the stadium-like structure are definitely worth exploring. I'm invited for a closer look at these guys enjoying some meaty soup. I always feel welcomed here.
Of course, one of the obvious reasons a foreigner would want to visit a more local market like this one is the chance to see everyday life in Da Nang and have a few exchanges with local sellers who are always up for filming and having some fun. Let you go. I find usually the sellers at these markets are pretty fair with foreigners, but it's always good to know your prices before you start shopping. It's not necessary to bargain for street food dishes, and most of the fruit and produce, I find, is priced pretty fairly. Other items are negotiable. Con Market is not considered a tourist market, it's actually referred to as the commercial center these days, but there are lots of interesting handcrafted products that easily compel you to look closer. Hello. So everything is going pretty well as I had planned so far in the telling of this story. I still wanted to come back here and get some more segments with food and whatever else that looked interesting. And maybe even some locals teasing me about my height. Why not? In the meantime, I showed up at my local market that I visit a few times a week, the Mian Market. I was there to scout out some things of interest and shoot some test video. Hello. I captured this just to get an idea of light and context. Nothing special, and I'd only use it if something interesting happened. This is a favorite market of expats, as it falls in the neighborhood or ward where many live. This is when things around the region and country started to take a turn for the worse. Little did I or others know that strict measures were once again looming as new cluster outbreaks of COVID-19 were happening around the country, including in Da Nang following the reunification day long weekend. This is where the video I thought I was going to create started to become something else. A series of orders were swiftly announced by the authorities, including the closing of bars, karaoke clubs, and massage parlors. Then the markets became strictly controlled now with vouchers needed in order to enter in some cases. Many vendors had simply packed up with the new restrictions. I managed to get one more cafe visit in across the beach before takeaway and ordering online was the new normal. I could feel closures and imminent isolation in the air. With cafes being such an integral part of everyday life here, I'm sure you can imagine what kind of effect the closures have on the atmosphere of a city or town in Vietnam. The beach, of course, was closed too. At this point, I asked the same question everyone else asked. When? When does it all end? And I'm not just talking about Vietnam. When does it all end for everyone? The families that have been separated, the feeling of isolation, hopelessness, and or anger that has somehow invaded a part of our consciousness. And of course, the suffering of pain and loss. I went to see how the Han market was getting along now that there were several restrictions in place. 
It seemed that many vendors had decided to pack things up as well, although there were still places open around the outside of the market and inside. The expat bars and karaoke clubs in the area had all been shut down as a part of new measures to control these new outbreaks. Han Market, a popular market for tourists, was on the list of places to visit for this video as well. I really didn't want to see it on these terms though. I also went back to check around the outside of the con market. Some vendors and food stalls had packed up, but there was still activity around and people coming and going, but certainly not at the regular pace for this part of the day. To me, it felt lifeless compared to just a couple of weeks ago. So when will it end? You see, I have no idea. Who does? You and I have no control over this. It's going to end when it ends, or perhaps maybe it never really does fully for some time. I'm just as frustrated, disillusioned, disappointed with feelings of powerlessness as you may have too. I personally experienced setbacks and missed opportunities a lot more than just a video getting messed up because of this horrible disease that's ripped through the globe. I see your messages and feel your pain too. It's everything from ruined vacation plans to being separated from your spouse and newborn child. I turn to one of Vietnam's great sages for some wisdom and inspiration. Zen master, Buddhist monk, peace activist, and author Thich Nhat Hanh. By the way, he is 94 years old now and currently lives in Way, approximately 80 kilometers northeast of here. He once said, hope is important because it can make the present moment less difficult to bear. If we believe that tomorrow will be better, we can bear a hardship today. He also said, because you are alive, everything is possible. So if we react with hope, we have a chance to lessen our suffering today. When we stop trying to control the things around us and simply control how we react to the world, we have true power. And as long as we are here and waking up every day, we have a chance for better days. Stay safe and keep the hope alive. We will get through this. Hey there, at home, staying safe, hope you are too. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, thumbs up please. Tons more videos from Vietnam, East Asia, and Southeast Asia, and South Asia, so do subscribe to the channel. Thanks again, also wanna thank Nia and Andreas for their recent generous contributions. You can also support the channel as well. A Couple different links in the video description below. Check it out, and thank you so much in advance. Please stay safe, we'll get through this.